Welcome to We Wine Podcast. We're your hosts, Maritza and Melinda. And we're here today to introduce ourselves. Today is our initial kickoff, right? Yeah. I know. I'm excited. We're excited to, you know, tell you a little bit of ourselves and learn about everybody else and bring on our guests. We're yeah. excited for this whole process. I mean, you guys have been seeing a little bit of sneak peeks on our Instagram and, you know, thank you for the followers that follow us at We Want Podcast. Um, today, we're going to kick off just kind of how we met. I think that is a funny story in itself, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to say my perspective and then <laughs> kind of, I don't think our stories will be that different, but yeah. you never know. <laughs> I mean, I think it's hysterical from the way it started. I mean, do you want to kick it off or you want I'll me start. to? All right, so, go. um, we attended the same church, um, and we both had young child. So we, they would go to the nursery while we were in church. So once the service was done, I am picking up my daughter and I said, I'm here for Mia Bella and <laughs> she's behind me and she goes, my daughter's Mia Bella. Yeah. And I look back at her like, totally thought she was kidnapping my kid. I, so thought, you know. <laughs> I thought she was trying to claim my kid because <laughs> we thought that that name was pretty unique. Yeah. Um, I haven't, I, I've heard some people have that name, but it was pretty unique. Yeah. And um, she goes, no, no, my daughter's name <laughs> is Mia Bella as well. And um, I was like, oh, okay. Because I looked at her weird. Yeah, I think at the same time, I kind of remember them calling the name and you're like, I'm here for Mia Bella. I was like, oh, no. In my mind, I was like, oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> She's taking my kid. <laughs> um, so that is the beginning. I think yes. we're on the same page on yeah. that. Are so, we pretty yeah. cool? Yeah. Um, so from there, you know, then her name was Maritza yes. and I'm Melinda and then her husband's Johannes and my husband's Juan yeah. and so <laughs> the J's, the M's, the M's. Yeah, we were totally like, whoa, this is very crazy. It, her daughter's birthday's in October. My oldest daughter's in October. It, too much. Too much. We had a lot of coincidence and I think also the time that we met, we needed each other. Oh, totally. We were basically going through some tough patches, I would yeah. say, right? That's for another episode. Yeah. But yes, we were going through some very hard times and we definitely leaned on each yeah. other um, throughout that because... Yeah. We became, I mean, I think it clicked like right away. Yeah. Like right away. I mean, we went to concerts. We had stuff here at the house. Oh my God. Like get togethers. It was just back to back. We did a lot together and our friendship built. Um, she was there for me. I was there for her. I think once day you had surgery i think that was your tonsil surgery oh probably this is guys this is why i sound like this you know besides <laughs> my coaching but like as soon as i raise my voice this is what happens so i'm sorry yeah so <laughs> um if, you know i came here to help her with little things here and there whatever i could and you know and vice versa you know and we just We've gone on vacation yes. together. Yes. That was my first <laughs> girl's trip, by the way. Best time ever. We went to Puerto Rico, so it was Oh, my awesome. gosh. That was in in pandemic. Yes. Guys. Right. Right. Correct. So. Last year, right? It was yeah, last year. Was, yeah. Last year, guys. It so. was. Yeah. It was about a year ago. Yeah. Um, 2021. And so we went, um, you know, we just needed a break, um, everyday life. You know, with the kids and the hustle and the bustle. And I think every also 2020 took a toll on and everybody. Correct. Um, so we took that break. But um, let's, I guess. Let's chip away at our story. How yeah. So <laughs> let's do that. Um, so I think if you've gone on our Instagram, you kind of read a little bit of our introduction photos. Right? Yes. But I think today we kind of want to let you in a little bit into our lives, right? Be a little bit vulnerable, let you guys understand kind of the concept of why we did this because I think through our own individual stories, we've seen our growth. And um, I personally believe that everybody has a story, right? I really feel that the strongest people, it's because you've gone through something. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. I think that um, you don't realize, you know, 
or your strength when you're in your everyday life. When people tell me, oh, wow, you great job or, you know, something like to, to that extent, I'm, I'm just like, really? I didn't do anything yeah. out of the norm. Like I didn't do anything extraordinary. Yeah. So how about we start with, I'll start, we'll start with your story. My story. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, the background right over there, read right, is you came from. So I, my parents are, I'm originally born in Jersey. Um, my parents are from here. Um, my grandparents are Puerto Rican. Um, so I, when my parents separated, my mom moved to Florida. So that's where I grew up. I went from pre-K, I think, pre-K four possibly, and so high school. I even started college over there. One day, <laughs> my dad just, you know, we've had many conversations and um, finally he convinced me. And I said, okay, I'll move to Jersey. You know, I needed a change. I was going through a lot. And um, I said, all right, mom, let's um, move you to a one bedroom. I'm moving to Jersey. And I think it was hard for both of us. What year was that? Uh, 14 years ago. Wow. That was February of 25th. I got on a train and have not looked back. Jeez. It was hard. It was so hard. How old were you? I was 20. Wow. So like your full life, you just... That's it. Yep, that's it. I just got, I, I needed a change and I needed, I think, that base, like somewhere to go, right? Mm -hmm. um, my dad didn't want me living on my own. Um, I was going to move in with a roommate and get my own apartment, but he felt like I was still too young. You know, the Hispanic culture. Oh, yeah. And they don't want you living on your own so young. So I said, okay. And I moved. I lived with my dad. Um, and his wife and the kids, my siblings. And I slept on the couch for a couple months and then he realized I was here to stay. <laughs> <laughs> she's not going anywhere. Um, she's not going anywhere. <laughs> she's still here. Um, so he made me a room and um, I was there until I left my house with um, my now husband um, and I was pregnant. Um, so my now daughter, so yeah. that's, that's that. So that's, I've been here. I haven't gone back and it wasn't easy, but, what um, do you think the biggest change for you, right? I mean, coming from right warm weather to cold weather to like different attitudes, because I feel like the South is more laid back, like Puerto Rico is so more back. laid back and here everyone's like, go, 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 go. <laughs> yeah, that was a struggle for me. Um, but I, I learned, like, it was funny because I remember in the beginning stages of that, um, my, we went to New York City to visit my aunt with my mom and my cousin. So we took the train. I was like, all right, let's take the train. I know how to get there. And my mom at the end of when we already got to my aunt's house, She's like, wow, you didn't even flinch. Like you were just like, all right, let's go, let's go, the hustle and bustle. And and I was just like, yeah, because they can't see that you don't know where you like you're Yeah. You don't know where you're going. You don't you can't look at signs like that. You have to just go. Cause that New York, you know, but I'm still super laid back. That person yeah. is still there. I agree. And um, I that's just my personality. I don't think that's ever going to change. I think I belong on the beach. Um, I got to convince my husband, Juan, if you're listening, yeah. please, you know. Um, let's convince them. <laughs> let's convince them. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's my story. I, you know, I graduated college while, you know, having my daughter. That's another thing. Yeah. Um it wasn't easy. I just pushed myself. Nothing was handed to you. You had to work for everything you have. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I have great parents. I do. Um, they support me, but it, no, not handed. Yeah. I mean, not because they didn't want to or anything. I think it's just that you know, like they 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 where they come from it's just like generation they you give a little more and they gave me whatever they could and the best that they could and yeah and i i love them for that oh that's beautiful yeah see your story's so sweet i feel like mine is gonna come in like a tornado <laughs> well, i also 
I also like I don't know I just it, that that goes again I think Maritza knows a, obviously a lot deeper yeah, and a lot yeah. of more and um I just like to just coat it yeah 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 <laughs> yeah I'm just, just like to, to make it smooth make <laughs> exactly. it, I will say probably in this I'll probably be the more vulnerable one and you're the more guarded one hey definitely yeah which, which <laughs> i think it'll make for good episodes right because it's gonna be like tug of war me poking her you guys won't see that but i'm like come on talk say this <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i i think that that is our personality yes. so i am a little more guarded and yep. um marissa will just spill her beans i think I, i'm also an open book if you, you ask i will yes i'll tell you yes um i will walk into a room with strangers and by the end of the night know everybody i'll be like you'll find me talking to all everyone yeah that's my personality but Maritza's story that um, Maritza Maritza is a warrior. Yeah, she that. she really is, and um, I admire you. Oh, thank you. So thank you. let's um, <laughs> let's tell them where you are from, your childhood, and yeah. so I mean, I actually graduated high school in Bergenfield, but I call myself the Tri-State Kid. Um, we started in New York went to New Haven, Connecticut, and nothing against New Haven, but that was probably like my most traumatizing years of life. Um, oh, <laughs> man. We probably saw more gunshots and more like gangster stuff in Connecticut yeah. than in New York City, which is crazy. I mean, just like a little background, guys. My parents bought a new house in New Haven, Connecticut. We unpack. Right? <laughs> First day there, a rock is thrown through our window. Oh, your dad did tell me some of yeah. these stories. And I like did. my mom flipped that and she's like, that's it, pack it up, we're going back <laughs> to the Bronx. Like it was insane. Like if anybody knows the show Cops, like you know with that bad boys, bad boys, remember that guys? Well, I, I personally <laughs> yeah. like lived it. Like oh, it was man. like, I remember one time, now meanwhile guys, I was, I think I was, eight till about like 12 years old when we lived in New Haven, Connecticut. So like, that's like young, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like my brother was older, he's three years older. My parents, God bless them, they really, they made sure we didn't go to public school. <laughs> like they put us in schools yeah. where I was the darkest person, okay? Oh wow. Exactly, like that was like <laughs> insane. Like my brother went to a private school, I went to a private school, but when the bus dropped us off, we were like full-blown Olympic runners getting to our house, like sprinting because it was that dangerous. Wow. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, we were blessed when we relocated to New Jersey, you know, but I mean, my dad was so funny. He tells us a story that um, the people buying the house were short money. And my dad was like, no, 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 I got you. I got you. I'll, I'll give you the money. It's good. It's good. Like, just, I, I need to get out of here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did say how bad he wanted to get out of that house. <laughs> he was like, let's go. I mean, guys, uh, another episode I'll share, but, like, if you ever watch, like, you know, Cops, just know that I lived it, okay? <laughs> um, we moved to Bergenfield when I was 12 and uh, so I started like seventh grade, right? That's like that middle school awkward. Oh man. You know, everybody knows everyone except me, I'm the new kid. And um, you know, I've always been a natural athlete. So I just got myself involved in like sports and keeping myself busy. Um, and then I'll never forget age 15. Uh -oh. I saw the Marines come into my high school and they did like this whole full blown like gym class. I was so amped, came home, I literally, I'm like, mom, I know what I want to do, this and this and that. My mom looked at me, she's like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ma, I want to be a Marine. She was like, oh, no, you not. <laughs> oh, my mom wanted me to be a Marine. Oh, see? Okay, <laughs> look, I see your mom would have high-fived me. Mom was like, nope. No, no, I was like, oh, no, I'm not going into yep. the military. No, my mom anyway. was like, nope, nope, nope. And she made like a deal. She's like, all right, if you don't play sports in college, I'll sign for you. Ooh. So I was like, all right, moms are not dumb. Of course, right? I play and I got scouted for Western Connecticut. Uh-oh. Right? Okay. I did softball, volleyball. But then here I am. I'll never forget my grandmother before she passed away. May she rest in peace said to me, Maritza, live your life for you. Mm. She said, your parents are building their lives for them. 
She goes, one day they're not going to be here. And if you follow the dreams they want for you, you'll never be happy. Wow, that's a gem. I know. That's I a gem. Know. So, Thank you, Grandma. Yeah. That was a gem. So that she is. legit lit the fire in me. And I was 18. And in my <laughs> spring break, I went to the recruiter's office, signed myself up. Wow. But of course, I was 18 already, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was like checking in my mom. For an 18 year old, but I was like, mm. I don't care how old you are. Yes. Um, still to this day, she still scares me. I'm not gonna lie. Love her, but she still scares your me. Your parents <laughs> scare you to <laughs> some extent. Right. And I remember, like, I signed up, and it was uh, May of 99. And uh, I waited like two days before I was leaving for boot camp <laughs> <laughs> to tell my parents. Because I was so scared. I was like, um, so by the way, I, I leave in two days to boot camp. And I remember the recruiter came to the house and my dad kicked them out. It was insane. But they couldn't do anything because I was of age, right? Yeah. So I joined and it was, you know, for me, I had a plan. Like I was yeah. like, my vision was, all right, I'll do the Marine Corps. I wanted to do like um, either FBI or DEA. Wow. Like those were my goals. I was like, this is what I'm going to do. This is my plan. Like... And I was doing fine. This also speaks to the difference between Maritza and I, <laughs> because Maritza likes structure. Oh yeah. And I'm by fly by the seat of your pants kind of gal. Like I'm very free spirited. I mean, so is she to an extent, yeah. but she needs structure. Yes. Like I need times. Like <laughs> she yeah. knows what she wants. She knows what she's doing. She knows where she's getting it. And we work. We work well oh, because 100%. of this. Yeah. Because. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, so like I just remember like so I you know, like fast forward, I joined the core, everybody knows nine eleven. Yeah. And um, you know, for me that is probably when I officially grew up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh when that happened, our unit got called there. So I was part of search and rescue. I think that's the first time I ever saw like death, you know? Wow. Um, and I'll never forget because it was, you know, in the city and our, if anybody knows Jersey, like Bergenfield is right over the George Washington bridge. So maybe you're talking Very about like, close. yeah, like maybe 15, 20 minutes, give or take, you know? And I remember my mom was teaching in Teaneck High School and, um, I had to be there maybe already over 24 hours. It was like close to, we were peaking at like 30 something hours, me working straight and they had set up somewhere for us to stay, but you know, I'm not gonna lie, the little kid in me wanted to go home because yeah. I knew my parents' house was there, but I had no keys, no nothing. So mm -hmm. I spoke to like an NYPD person, they allowed me to come. They drove me over the bridge and I'll never forget guys, I was filled with sut, like white sut. Like if you ever seen Independence Day, the movie, like that's what I looked like. Yeah. Like that's what that place looked like, but I was like, it was bad. If you see pictures, that's pretty much like what I looked like walking with the, you know, with the police. And then um, we get to Jersey and I tell the cop like, hey, uh, I don't have keys. My mom works at Teaneck High School. And now imagine like, I'm in the days. <laughs> I roll up to this high school. They open up the door to me and I look like I just came from war, essentially. Yeah. I walked in, my poor mom had no idea where I was, nothing. So all she remembers is like me walking in her classroom filled with all this, just asking her for her keys. That's it. She has no. She had no idea where I was. She didn't know I was part of 9-11, like search and rescue. Wow. Like, she gave me her keys. She, like, started crying. And I remember stopping her, like, I'm good. I just need keys. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I just want a shower. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> no. I, I had enough time to get to her house because then I, I forgot what department picked me up. I was showered. I maybe, I don't even think I ate. I just showered. I washed my camis, put them on again, and I was back. And I think I, that ran for that for like a whole month. And then, you know, our unit got sent to Afghan. I came home. I was good. In the midst of it all, I was about to get out of the Marine Corps um, until, like, I got called to be a cop. Yeah. And then I was a cop in Rockland County, like, doing undercover stuff, you know? Wow. And uh, probably one of the best moments of my life because I felt like I was in like, a TV show. Like, that's my mentality, right? <laughs> like, when there's action, I'm like, ooh, new episode. It's funny because sometimes if you ask lawyers, what made you become a lawyer? Yeah. And they're just like, oh, 
law and order, like or you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. like a, a judge Judy or something. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. they they say you feel like, like it, like a Listen, show, like because because you feel like all kidding aside. When I was in boot camp. <laughs> Every day I was like, oh, new episode, let's see. <laughs> like, what's the challenge today? And like, for me, my drill instructors were my competitors. Like, yeah. I would look at them and I'm like, I'm going to be as fast as you. I'm going to be as strong as you. Like, that was my mentality. So like, yeah, you go through crap, but I think it's the personality. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, my personality was kind of like, eh, it is what it is. It's, you know, it's a season. We got to get through it. You know what I mean? Let me be the best. Let me push through this. And that that's what it is, right? Yeah. So even through these challenges, you know, like, long story short, like, we got sent overseas after that. You know, I was already on the job. Got called again. Went overseas to Iraq. And uh, unfortunately, you know, I can't share too much, but I did get injured. Um, I have metal in my wrist, my spine, my shoulder. Um... See what I mean? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like this woman is like bionic woman. That was <laughs> yeah. Seriously, I, I she has nine lives, maybe a yeah, little more yeah. than nine lives. I, I will share with you guys that uh, there was a point where I lost consciousness, and um, I guess they were going to tell my parents like it was done, you know, and um, I came to, you know, but I think my biggest struggle was adjusting back to life. When I came back home, adjusting to the fact that my left hand no longer moves, like my wrist, I have no up and down motion, yeah. side to side, like, but in it all, like, my mentality was like, cool, so now what do I need to do? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like, how do I adjust to this, you know? And uh, believe it or not, guys, I actually ended up playing volleyball for Puerto Rico. Wow. Like, with my hand like this, I hid it from the coaches. Like, I got on the team. You know what I mean? Just just secretly hiding it. Like, if you guys know the sport shirts that have the, the hide the, the thumb, you know? So, it hid my scar, and I went, and I played for Puerto Rico, and I already had my first daughter, you know? Like, I just, I guess my mentality is keep going, right? Yeah. If, like, one wall is put up, I, like, I'm like, all right, I'm going to hurdle this wall and keep going. Yeah. You know? And I think... um my biggest struggle, right? So I had a uh, double back surgery, spine surgery. So my spine is fused, guys. But if you see me, you would never know. You would never. Like, I, I, you know, I still, I stay fit. I work out. Like, you know, I coach volleyball. Like, I shared my story with the boys that I coach and the girls that I coach. And, you know, it's kind of cool because I inspire them. Like, I kind of try to tell them, like, listen, there's no limits. Like, you're going to get roadblocks, but there's no limits. You know what I mean? And I think that's how I perceive my life right now. You yeah. know? Like, yes, I live in pain 24-7. You know what I'm saying? But I will never show you that I'm in pain. One, because I have my three girls who watch me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not, I'm not teaching them, like, never show pain. But I'm teaching them, like, work through it. Yeah. You know? I, I can tell you that in the time... <laughs> in the years that I've known you, um, you know, you, she just keeps going. Like she, <laughs> it's like surgery after surgery or, you know, she's back up like nothing. I know that maybe we won't talk for a month or two or, you know, because friends, we, we have our own things, right? Yeah, we yeah. go up and we go down and yeah. we're like, you know, so and, and not between us, but I'm just saying life, like our life, life, yeah, life yeah, yeah. in general. Yeah. But um, she, I come over one day for something that she was having at her house. And she's like, oh, yeah, so um, I had to get this done. It, like, she just had so much going on health-wise. But she seemed <laughs> perfectly fine. And she was running around. And I was just like, are you okay, Jean? No, I'm fine. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, oh. Yeah. And it, like... She gives this aura of, like, don't even worry about me. I'll be good. Yeah, kind yeah, yeah. of, like, you know? Yeah. And, I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, there's two ways, right? I, I've learned in my life, right? You can't control what happens. The only yeah. thing you can control is how you react, right? So, if I react scared or sad or anxious, then I'm only causing, like, more damage. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where I choose to react, like, okay, this is happening, but it's not the end. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, this too shall pass. Like, I can get over it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I think that's, for me, 
probably my biggest obstacle was my first spine surgery where they told me I was never going to walk. And yet she runs every morning. And correct. <laughs> like that's for another episode where we'll talk about that story. But I mean, if anyone right now is struggling, right? Um, I want to say mental illness, physical, um, anything right? Because life is hard and you get attacked. There's attack after attack after attack, you know? I just want to give you hope to continue, right? Like, this is not the end of your story, right? No. Like, at the end, you have your pen and you rewrite it. You know what I'm saying? So, you choose, right? How I've been saying, like, choose how you want to react. You yeah, know? I think that, like you said, you, were, you said that it was a little guard. It's just... You don't want to focus on those negative things. Yeah. Um, and you don't want to focus on the difficult times. Yeah, it's a part of your story. Um, but it's what what can I do to move forward? What can I do to make my life better? It doesn't can, define you. It, exactly. It just, it was something that happened and you continue. Yeah. I mean, literally, like, I know life is hard. Right, it, it it can get hard. You could feel overwhelmed, especially being like women, right? Being wives, moms, sisters, daughters, like friends, whatever the case may be. But one, if you're struggling, struggling, ask for help. Like, Absolutely. you know what I mean? Don't keep it to yourself. Don't try to be a superhero. Like, if I need the help, I will ask. Like, I'm not ashamed of it. You know when I learned that when? after I had my daughter, mm. I. I learned it was very hard for me to ask for help mm. and um, after having her I remember everybody wanted to help with her I didn't <laughs> want you to help with her I want help with other things and yeah. I learned you know hey you know what I don't know about it I don't have that and I think especially for my husband right because I've always said well I got it yeah or but now he's probably like all right can you get it again because yeah. now <laughs> I'm like, here, do this, do that. Yeah, no. But definitely you ask need for it. help. You yeah. Need it. You need it. And, and, it's, and it's okay. Yeah. It's okay to ask for help. Like, it doesn't take away from who you are. You know what I mean? And I've learned this, I think, recently. It was funny talking with my brother. So I would tell him I would feel guilty seeing my husband, like, clean. Right? This is so weird. I would see him clean or doing something, and I'd be like, is it because he thinks I'm not doing it good enough? No. And like talking to my brother, my brother was like, no, I think our, because my mom did everything, right? Mm -hmm. Everything, everything, everything. So then growing up, like you, you get that, oh no, I got to do it. I got to do it all, right? But I've learned now, I'm like, I don't know, like it's just he genuinely wants to help. Yeah. And I've had to learn to be like, okay, yes, please help me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let, like, it, let go. Please, like, yeah, mm -hmm. it's cool. Like I appreciate it now. But in the beginning of our marriage, it was a struggle. Yeah. Like, it was like, me in my mind, like, you're judging me. Like, you think I'm not doing this good enough. Because, you know, I'm like the one of those, like, I got to get it right. <laughs> I need to do this right. <laughs> so I'm like, are you judging me cleaning? But it wasn't even that. It was just like, he would look at me like, I'm trying to help you. <laughs> and I'm like, are you though? Like, <laughs> are, are you? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I was just like, I don't get this. Like, don't be expecting me out there, you know, doing chopping trees or something. I don't know how this works, but. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that just, you know, goes to show, like, you know, we are not our past. Mm -hmm. We are not our parents. No. We, we have to. So I heard something somewhere. It said, don't live the life your parents want you to live, wanted you to live. Live the life you want your kids to live. Right. right. And um, whoever said that, you can Thank have the you. credit. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but it's true. Like, be the people that you, be the parents, be the mom, be the, you know, I guess us as mom, yeah. because we're women yeah. and our, we have girls. Be the person you want your daughter to be. Exactly. I mean... With this episode, we kind of hope that our stories, even though they're like different, very different, you know, but I hope it touched somebody out there who is, you know, kind of going through something that you can hear in us. Like if you changed and relocated, Melinda's story may have touched you. You yeah. know what I mean? If you're physically going through something, my story might yeah. have touched you, you know? I just want you guys to know that we're here for you. Um, we're here to support you, give you inspiration. 
Feel free to message us. Yeah. Feel free to questions, um, anything, questions. guys. Yeah, we're we, open books. We are. We are. Like, um, we are. <laughs> or give us ideas for episodes too. Yeah, you know, well, we're here to help and inspire. Um, and we hope you follow us on this journey. We yes. really um, enjoy. We appreciate you guys and look forward to more episodes. Yeah. So thank you for joining us and. Make sure you guys like and subscribe and follow us. Yes, thank you. We did really good. <laughs> <laughs>